Good morning, church. Welcome to our worship here at Douglasville First. I'm Pastor Scott Brown, and we're glad you're joining us today. We're in the third part of our series on Holy Conversations, and we're really excited because today it's going to get even more practical than it has up till now. You're going to want to join us this week on our Engage format on Tuesdays, evenings, and Wednesday mornings because we're going to have a lot to talk about. You'll see what I mean when we're done. But right now, sit back and worship with us. Enjoy the music. Enjoy the message. And we look forward to engaging with you as we go forward. Precious blood has left me forgiven. Pure like the whitest of snow. Powerful to make sin and shame retreat. His covenant is making me. So I will rise and lift my head, for by His mercy my life was spared. The highest name has set me free, because of Jesus my heart is clean. to discover the joy of holiness that falls as you draw me close and you what was lost is restored so high The highest name has set me free Because of Jesus, my heart is clean So I will rise and lift my head For by His mercy, my life was spent The highest name My heart is clean Because of Jesus My heart is clean Good morning, church. It's wonderful to be in worship together this morning. I'd like to take a moment to talk to you about our annual conference. You may be aware that this year we had a virtual annual conference. And every year during annual conference, the bishop takes up an offering. This year, our offering was for the Ministerial Education Fund. This helps students who want to go to seminary to be able to attend classes. I have to tell you that as a single mom with a mortgage, this ministerial education fund helped me so much to be able to get my education. So if you're interested in making an offering, then please just write ministerial education fund in the memo line of your check or designate that as you send it via mail, online, any way you do that. And we thank God for your giving. This morning, we want to remember one of the most wonderful members of our church, Bill Sargent Fight. He passed away last week, and oh, he will be sorely missed. Bill was a member of the Brotherhood Sunday School class. He was also a vital member of the community. He and his wife served in all kinds of places, touching hundreds and hundreds of lives. We give thanks for Bill today, and we light the Paschal candle in his honor. And now, brothers and sisters, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Most holy and wonderful God, we come to you this morning full of thanksgiving. 
We thank you for the life of Bill, who served you in such a great way in this community. Lord, we thank you for the fact that you are bringing healing to members of our church, those we have prayed for and those we have called upon you to bless. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. We know that you are alive and well in our lives. You are a great God. And we thank you, Lord, for your spirit continuing to guide us and show us the way. Lord, we seek to serve you well in this church. And we pray that your spirit will show us how we can reach out to people who have yet to know you. Lord, there are so many in our lives. And Lord, sometimes we struggle to know how to speak to them. But Lord, you have given us each a story. And we thank you for that. And we just ask you to help us share that story with those that we meet at the grocery store, with those that we meet at the ball field, with those we see in our neighborhoods. Everywhere we go, Lord, we pray that your spirit would go ahead of us, making it possible in this strange time for more people to come to know you the way that we know you. Lord, we pray for those who are hurting right now. We know that there are many, Lord, who've been touched by the bad weather, by fires, by tornadoes and hurricanes. Lord, we ask that you would bring them comfort and peace. We know that there are so many that have been touched by COVID-19. And Lord, we just pray for healing for each of these. Lord, whether they're a member of our congregation or out there in the world, Lord, we just pray that you will guide those who are in our government as they make decisions going forward. That we would always, Lord, put you first as we make these decisions. Lord, we know that you are a great and faithful God. And so, Lord, we trust you with our lives and with our prayers. And now we pray the words that our Savior taught us as he said. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. God, I give you what I can today. These scattered ashes that I hid away, I lay it all at your feet. From the corners of my deepest shame, these scattered ashes that I hid away, I lay it all at your feet. Oh, help me to lay it down. Oh, Lord, I lay it down. Oh, let this be. Savior's loss 
in the crimson flowing from the cross pour over me pour over me yes oh let this be where i die my lord with thee crucified and for all, once and for all. Oh Lord, I lay it down. Oh Lord, I lay it down. Help me to lay Good morning. Here we are in our third part of our series on Holy Conversations, and we've been talking about practical ways to do just sharing the good news, practical ways to be witnesses, evangelism, whatever word you want to use. Uh, somebody even phrased it as the, the modern evangelism uh, that we call it today. It's just relational evangelism. And so we've talked a little bit, some practical ways. Today is my favorite way to do it. This is a scripture that just jumps off the page at us about how easy it is to share the gospel. Now, in this passage, we're going to pick up in Acts chapter 8. We're going to start with verse 26. And this is the church after it's been uh, spread out through persecution. We'll talk about that more next week. But the disciples and the apostles are going to different parts of the world. And we pick up Philip. Now, I'm sure Philip did a lot of wonderful and amazing things. But Scripture only accounts for him a couple of times. This is one of them. It's going to sound like a simple, simple thing. But, it's, but for Scripture to even put it in there means it's powerful and impactful. So listen in verse 26 now as we read this account. It says, Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of Kandaki, which means queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The Spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Let me read that part again. Go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading? Philip asked. How can I? He said, unless someone explains to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. All Philip was told to do by God in that moment was to go stand by that chariot. Go stay near it. That's it. Now I can imagine that uh, at any other day and time, Philip would have walked down that road uh, on any road in that region. If there had been a chariot sitting on the side of the road, they wouldn't have thought anything of it. For one thing, it usually would have been a royal or someone in an army, and they wouldn't have thought to approach the chariot like that. It would have just been common knowledge to see them there. They're taking a break, they're taking a rest, they're getting water, whatever they're doing, and just walk past it. it, it this is almost too easy an illustration, but, but it'll help you understand. Uh, most of us at one time or another have bought a car or an outfit or a pair of shoes or something. We thought, this is the only pair like it. This is the only car of this color that I've ever seen. 
And what happens the minute we drive that car off the lot or the minute we walk out in that new shirt or those new shoes or that new handbag or whatever it may be, we see it everywhere, don't we? We see hundreds of them just like it. Why didn't we see those before? Well, they weren't on our radar. We weren't thinking in terms of that. And so we just noticed them in the mass of everything else and we didn't pay attention to the things that were like the thing we had just bought. And so everyone else has it. It wasn't unique, and therefore, we didn't notice it. As we talk about uh, holy conversations, we have to understand that our radar has to change. Uh, Now that we're aware of the fact that we can have these holy conversations, now that we're aware of the fact that there are people around us all the time who need to hear about Christ, who need to hear an invitation to church, who need a relationship with us first and then with Christ, then they're going to start appearing. And one of the things we can do in our life is to pray that God will prepare us every day of our life as we get up and start our day. Lord, show me who's around me today. Lord, open my eyes to see the people around me who need me to interact with them, who need me to make a connection, who need me to make that contact. As we talk about this, we need to know this can happen to us. We cannot not see the people around us when we're not focused on being a witness. We've got to be open to the fact that we're witnesses to everybody we come in contact with throughout our day. And just like uh, a new car or a new outfit or whatever else, we have to put our radar and set it to on every time we go out. Now, that's developing a holy habit. And that's developing a habit that's set apart from all other habits. But we can do that as Christians. For Philip, all he was told to do was go stand near that chariot. And God puts us every day in places and in people's lives and in situations where we get to do that if we have our eyes open, if we're paying attention. Now, this is not a deep theological matter here, right? This is not a a deep subject. This is such a so practical and so easy. Listen, God knows that we are kind of hard-headed sometimes, and God knows we're not the brightest uh, bulbs in the the pack sometimes. (laughs) And so he gives us things that are very, very practical and very easy to do. And so being a witness for him, as scary as that's been throughout our generations, and as horrifying as that sounds up front, is really one of the easiest things in the world to do. We have to look for ways to start a conversation with people. And be aware that we have that ability. Go stand near that chariot, Philip. And when Philip stood near that chariot, he heard the guy reading something he knew something about. Isaiah is talking about Christ, who is a friend of Philip's, who Philip has spent the last three years with. And Philip says, do you know what you're reading? And the man says, how can I possibly know unless someone interprets for me? He said, well, I can help you out. Why don't you come on up in the chariot and let's talk about this. Not only does the guy become a believer in Messiah Jesus, he gets baptized before Philip is transported to another location. That's a scripture for another time. What a great moment. All Philip had to do to be obedient to God was stand near the chariot and be ready for whatever happened. And He was ready because the guy was talking about something Philip knew quite a bit about. It's as simple as being aware of what's going on around us. One of the greatest things in our culture right now whether you agree with it, disagree with it, like it or don't like it, or tattoos. The younger generation and and 40 and under, man, everybody is tattooed. And they they do it for reasons. They do it for sentimental reasons. They do it because of loyalties. They do it because they like tattoos. But the wonderful thing about it, it gives us a chance to open a conversation. Because if someone took the time to put a permanent thing on their body, it meant something to them. And that's a connection to their life. So it's a constant advertisement walking around all the time saying, tell me about that. Tell me about how you came about that that symbol or what does that name mean? Uh, A couple years ago, we took our staff. We were all going to lunch one day. We ended up going to the local Zaxby's. We walked into Zaxby's. The girl who's taking our orders has this huge tattoo across her arm. and And I'm embarrassed to say I don't remember what it said, but it said something like special. And it was in huge letters. And so I commented on it. I said, wow, special. You must really be special or, or that must really mean something for you to have that right there on your arm. And she kind of had this weird look in her eye and she looked at me kind of sideways for a minute. And she goes, no one's ever asked me about my tattoo before. 
which I found surprising because it really was quite large. And she goes, I would love to tell you about it. Let me finish these orders and I'll come to your table. I didn't think she'd ever come. But there she came a few minutes later, sat down right in the middle of a church staff, sat next to me on the bench and began to whisper uh, her, her story to me. And she started telling me about having children and being a single mom and about abuse and about the things that had happened in her life and how that word tattooed on her arm had gotten her through some very difficult days and how it was still getting her through days knowing that God found her special and knowing that she, even though she still had struggles, could have hope and look up and get past the days where she contemplated suicide. She tells me all of this sitting in a Zaxby's with my staff sitting around me because I happened to ask her about her, tap her tattoo. How simple is that? I've done that more times than I can tell you. I can't count the number of times I've mentioned somebody's tattoo to them and gotten their story. It's that easy. Whether it's a tattoo or it's a t-shirt. Listen, people put t-shirts. They wear things they're proud of on their t-shirts. Loyalties, college loyalties, sports loyalties, organizational loyalties. And now, listen, in COVID, we're getting the masks. They're starting to become very, um, very unique. And people are putting their teams on them. They're putting their schools on them. There are ways to start a conversation with somebody every day walking all around us. Hats, just about anything you can imagine. I like when I go to the hardware store and I'm looking for a tool to do a job for something. Uh, very rarely know what tool to get because I'm not very good at that. But I'll sit there and study and look. And in fact, there's somebody standing near me. It's just an opportunity for a conversation. Hey, I've got a, a broken uh, a sink that I'm trying to fix. What are you doing? What are you looking for? And maybe we start a conversation that way. There's just so many ways to start those conversations if we're willing to do it. Now, I realize not everyone's an extrovert. And, and I, I'm preaching and I'm telling you my way of doing it, which is very extroverted. But there's a lot of ways to do the same thing as an introvert. I get you're probably not going to talk to somebody in public. We had a lady in my home church who was uh, just brilliant at this. And she, I don't know that I ever heard her say a word all the years I knew her. But for years, even after I left that church, years into the future until she died, every, she, she would take the church master list and she knew every birthday of everybody in that church. And when somebody joined the church, she'd find out when their birthday was. And every single person in that church or in that community that she knew, if she could get their hands on your birthday, she sent you a card. And for years, even long after I'd left that church, I would get birthday cards from that precious lady just telling me that God loved me and telling me somebody was thinking about me. And when she died, the stories that came out about the birthday cards and the stories that came out about how meaningful and impactful that was that she reached out and remembered them in the name of Jesus had an impact on people. There's a thousand ways to do this. There's a thousand ways, a million ways to tell the good news of Jesus Christ. And not everybody's going to do it the same way. God said to Philip, go stand near that chariot. Go stand there and wait and see what happens. So when you get up tomorrow morning or you go out to the store this afternoon or you go into to work or in a school or wherever it is you go the next few days, here's the prayer. God, show me where to stand. Show me what conversations to listen to. Show me what to pay attention to. Show me who needs me to, to enter into their life and, and even offer a moment of, of something, relationship, acknowledgement, um, recognition. We have stories all the time of people who said, look, somebody talked to me today and it was the only person that talked to me all day long. Somebody shook my hand and that meant the world because usually in my day people don't do that. Someone asked to pray for me. No one's ever asked to pray for me before. We hear those stories from the other side on a regular, continual basis. You can be part of those stories. You can be part of those intentional moments, but you have to turn the radar on. You have to see what you haven't seen before. You have to stand in places maybe you haven't stood before, or at least keep your ears open in the places that you do stand. You have to listen to your students, listen to your coworkers, look for those signals when someone's checking you out at a restaurant or a store or waiting on your table. Look for those moments to be invitational. Look for those moments to say, hey, I see you. I see you. 
one of the words that gets used a lot today in our dealing with uh, young people who are struggling with suicidal thoughts and people who are struggling in counseling of loneliness and, and despairing kind of issues is they say that the very phrase, I don't think anybody even knows I'm alive. I don't think anybody sees me. I don't think anybody knows who I am at this place. When you notice somebody, you've just done the work of God. When you see them, you've made an impact in their day, I promise you. Now, it may not turn into a salvation moment for them right then. It may not even turn into the mention of church. As we've said throughout this series, it's not always going to be, hey, now that I've talked to this person, they're going to come to church and they're going to find Jesus. But it's planting a seed. It's the start of something. It may be the building of a relationship that you have now because you've seen that person, you've recognized them, you've acknowledged them. And once you do that, stand by that chariot and listen. You may stand by that chariot for a year. You may stand by that chariot for 10 years. You may stand there for, for most of their life until you get to say that right word, that one thing. You may stand there long enough for them to become part of the church. But you were part of that salvation story. You're part of that good news simply by recognizing, seeing them, and acknowledging that they are there. Acknowledging that they matter. That's the heart of what God's doing. That's the heart of what we call evangelism. That's the heart of being a bringer of good news. I see you. So my invitation this week in this very simple, short message is turn your radar on and ask God to help you see and hear what's around you. Ask him to give you the eyes and ears to see the people that you haven't seen before. And watch what happens. Some of you are going to do this. Some of you are going to be emailing me in a couple of weeks and saying, I can't believe it. I never, never would have noticed this person. I want that to happen over and over and over again because it really is that simple. Um, we've made the promise throughout this series that by doing these things, you're going to be able to share your faith like you've never shared it before. I'm keeping that promise. If you do this, if you pray that simple prayer and stand by that chariot, Stand by that coworker. Listen to what's being said around you. Pay attention to what's going on around you. Pay attention to someone's body language. And just watch. And don't be about just you. Be about them. God's going to move in those, ta in those times. So get ready because God's going to answer that prayer for you. Be intentional. Be invitational. Be observant. That's how easy it is to, to be a witness for Jesus Christ. All right, so if you're willing, I'm going to pray with you and I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray for all of us that just, just for the fact that I want this to be impactful, that I think God wants this to be impactful, I'm going to pray very specifically in my closing prayer that today and tomorrow that everyone who hears this message, everyone who's willing to take this challenge on will see something tomorrow, will hear something tomorrow that you haven't seen or heard before. You're going to notice something that you haven't noticed before. So join me in prayer if you're willing. Join me in prayer if you're up to this challenge. And let's do this together. Father, we're going to be very specific today. We're calling it out. Lord, we want to be witnesses. We want to be bringers of good news. That's what your church is supposed to do. That's our Christian calling. And so, God, I pray very, very specifically that today and tomorrow, whether it's in the stores, in our schools, at our work, even in our neighborhoods. Father, I pray that you open our eyes, open our ears to see and hear people, to see and hear moments, to see and hear things that we've not seen or heard before. It's not been on our radar. Father, let us flip that switch today. And I cannot wait, Lord, to hear the stories of what people say they've seen and heard. Lord, we're not always going to act on it. We're not always going to be able to make that move, have that conversation, but there's going to be a lot of times we are. So God, help us to go near those chariots and stand until we know what to do. Help us to just listen and know where we're supposed to enter. God, through the power of your Holy Spirit, give us that guidance. And as our eyes are open and our ears are open, give us an excitement for what we're going to be able to do for your kingdom simply by building conversations and relationships, simply by seeing other people. 
God, we love you for letting us be part of this. We love you for making this part of our discipleship because it's exciting. We give you all the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, get ready. I want you to email me, call me, let me know what you find out, what it looks like. I can't wait to share those stories all together. God bless you.